Welcome to this video. This is going to cover the basic naming conventions and what we call different components of turbochargers and turbocharging components. I'm going to start off by pulling up this intake manifold. Uh, this uh, directs air to the individual uh, cylinders in an engine. This also will contain, usually, uh, some fuel injectors unless the engine is direct inject or it's a carbureted vehicle. Uh, these little uh, guys are called runners and this main section is called a plenum and the plenum uh, is defined as the area that all the runners are attached to. The plenum generally does well being 40 to 60 percent of the engine's volume entirely. Uh, it's important to know what the plenum is. It has a lot of implications in the turbocharging as well as the length and uh, thickness and width of the runners. Moving on, this is a turbo housing cutaway, a very, very well done turbo housing cutaway. This area right here is called the CHRA, Center Housing Rotating Assembly, and it contains either ball or journal bearings or perhaps a mixture of both. Some CHRAs will be uh, cooled with engine coolant. All of them will also have an oil line to lubricate the bearings. The oil develops a lastrohydrodynamic layer. Uh, that is a very fancy way of saying the oil will build up around a journal bearing and stop the journal bearing from having metal and metal contact. This area right here is called the scroll housing, and uh, it is because the, the scroll housing comes off of the body of the turbo. As it moves into the body of the turbo, this area is called the volute, and here is called the parallel wall diffuser. Uh, this intake section up here is called the inducer. This down here is called the exducer, and this is a compressor, the axial centrifugal compressor. Before I get too far in, you'll notice that this is the exhaust side, and this is the turbine and the compressor, and this is called often the hot side and the cold side. So this side compresses the air going into the engine, and this is exhaust coming out of the engine. Furthermore, you'll notice this is uh, split into two, and this is a really good picture because uh, this is one vein or one housing right here, and this is in two. This is called a twin scroll turbocharger, or in other words, it has two volutes. Many turbine sections have a single volute. Some of them have two. And uh, I will make a video on why tw twin scrolls are so important. But for the time being, this helps to separate parts of the exhaust from interfering with each other. And this split volute will give you anywhere from 5 to 10% increase in performance anywhere on the power band. So this twin scroll does wonders in making the turbo more effective at performance and performing well. You'll notice air comes in this assembly, the compressor spins and uh, it creates a lot of kinetic energy and this energy gets pushed through this parallel wall diffuser into the housing and then out the uh, scroll housing. So air takes this path. Now the exhaust on the other hand comes into this flange and it swirls around and it eventually strikes these turbine blades and then it comes out this face. Now these uh, turbine, the exhaust hitting these turbine blades is what spins the shaft and spins the compressor. So it's a very nice demonstration of how this closed system works. Exhaust exit out here and air comes in here. So while <laughs> air exits this face, exhaust enters this face. They're kind of an antithesis of each other and while air enters here, exhaust exits here. But you can see you have a compressor and a turbine and you can get a really good idea of how the system works. Looking at this photo, you get another view of the volute, the scroll housing, and this is where the compressor would sit in here. The compressor. This is a compressor, a generic compressor that I modeled using a program called SolidWorks. If you have access to this program, I have a tutorial on how to create something like this as well. I want to go over some of the components of a compressor. This is a a very, very common and 
one of the best kinds of compressors you can have in a turbocharger. This is classed as an axial centrifugal compressor and there's numerous kinds of compressors that you can use in this turbo system. This one having a smaller blade, larger blade, smaller blade, larger blade. The smaller blade is called a splitter blade and it's found that using a smaller splitter blade will increase the amount of RPM or revolutions that this compressor can achieve and it can increase a greater rate of air or a greater mass flow rate going through it. Um, if I were to look at this compressor, this point to this outside point is known as your inducer diameter. This cut off the top is called your trim and by varying the cut off the top can vary the way that the compressor runs. And you have this bottom point to this bottom point, which is known as your exducer diameter. It's very common to have this curved fillet on an axial centrifugal compressor. This point right here um, is often vertical. Uh, I modeled it with a slight angle, but if it was vertical, it'd be known as your tip height. And this curvature is known as your wheel contour and how well it fits into the housing uh, or what housing it's compatible with is uh, largely due to the wheel contour. Now if I take a section view of this, now we're looking at uh, the, the turbine wheel cut in half. This is known as your compressor floor. This is known as your shaft bore. And up here is known as your nose. It's very common to have a fillet along the blade and the wheel floor. This fillet will increase strength as uh, these wheels can oftentimes reach 100,000 RPM. So they, they spin crazy fast and <laughs> a lot of thermodynamic considerations have to be taken into account when, that, uh, when that's the case. Okay, this is a wheel called a grouped wheel and you'll notice uh, that the blades are grouped together. You can have a splitter blade grouped as well or you can have asymmetric blades that are grouped together. They come in all shapes and sizes. You'll notice a notch taken out of this and uh, normally turbos will have four of these notches and you'll notice some uh, material missing from the nose right here. So this is called scallop balancing when you have material missing and it's a way of uh, getting the turbine to balance. But this is an example of a grouped wheel. Okay, this uh, compressor is called a full blade compressor, and it's simply defined as a full blade by having the inducer diameter equal to the exducer diameter. So this here is equal to this here. On to the next compressor. This is a very general axial centrifugal compressor. Um, it's missing a fillet in here. I haven't added that yet. It's pretty easy to add, and I should do that. But this is a very general standard axial centrifugal compressor, delivers very good performance. This is a compressor known as a straight radial compressor. You'll find the naming is very straightforward because it's straight and radial. A lot of straight radial compressors don't have the smaller splitter blade here. And this is a much older design. This design provides a very high pressure ratio. In other words, it can give you a lot of compression. But because it's inefficient, um, it's largely not used today. That's it for this video. Uh, tune in for our next video where we'll cover turbocharging configurations, both single and twin turbos. And uh, if this video was helpful, please subscribe. That's the best way to help me back. I'll catch you next time.